the, you know, uh, the Osama bin Laden fiasco recently, the this national security state continues to justify its existence rather than pull back. And it's clear that this is obviously a, um, uh, a myth that needs to be continued. And, and it'll lead into my next question, which is the mainstream press, or the, uh, the capitalist press, the so-called mainstream press. Um, and I'd, I'd like to read just uh, one quote from the article, because I think it really nails some things for me, and hopefully for the listeners, and then I'd like to ask you about it. And, and you say, the mainstream media has been one of the key sites of the onslaught of criminal and unethical activities in which the national security state specializes. It was shown in the post-Watergate investigations of the 70s, for instance, that all of the most important media outlets in North America hosted over 3,000 paid agents of anti-communist disinformation hired by the CIA in Project Mockingbird. No organization or professional journalists um, have ever dealt seriously with the revelations that their industry is subject to deep subversion by agents of the national security state and other sponsors of propaganda paid to twist, distort, censor, and obliterate truth in reporting. Um, and I think you would argue that the global war on terror and the myth of 9-11, the official conspiracy theory of 9-11, uh, fall under the same rubric as communism once did. Um, let's talk about that a bit. Um, what institutions are we looking at? Well, uh, the uh, book by Jonathan Kay is published by HarperCollins. HarperCollins is owned by News Corporation. News Corporation is a Rupert Murdoch, you know, News Corporation owns Fox News. So uh, the same folks that brought us Glenn Beck and uh, the Tea Party uh, coverage wall-to-wall -wall also brought us this book by uh, Jonathan Kay. And it's very radical, extreme book. Basically, it's... Uh, um, guilt by association, you know, let's look at UFOs, Elvis didn't die, um, on and on. He, he, as Shermer does, groups all of this together, a classic propaganda technique, and says, well, it's all the same, it all falls under the rubric of something called conspiracism. And then he medicalizes the situation. He says, these conspiracists are mentally ill. They are diseased. This disease is communicable. It's contagious. So it has to be quarantined, and then he proposes a, a, a system of inoculation for youth in schools. Um, you know, to, to talk about people as vermin, as, uh, uh, as diseased, I mean, we've seen uh, where this can lead. So, you know, we, we have the huge aggressions out in the um, resource fields in Eurasia. Um, four million people displaced in Iraq, a million people murdered. How many... Uh, deformed babies are going to come from the de depleted Deplete. uranium. Uh, and uh, Pakistan is next, and is Yemen next. But domestically, here at home, this uh, sacred myth of 9-11, it it's, can be seen as kind of contamination of consciousness, of public consciousness, which is a terrible uh, assault on, on our P potential for democracy, for having any kind of rational uh, discourse. Um, you know, the 9-11 the, the, the issue, it turns out, you know, it's called the truthers. He, he, uh, Kay uh, treats the term as, as a joke, as a kind of put down, like you might call somebody in another generation a, a nigger or a wop or a kike, call somebody a truther now, and it's, it's like they're a ridiculous person. They're not suitable for integration in, in, into polite company. Uh, that you know, this, this is uh, this is not respectful of uh, a kind of civil society where we would have uh, decent debates. You know, where we could uh, agree to disagree on certain issues. Once you start to say, well, I'm not going to even get into the evidence. The people are just sick, and, and it, it's beneath contempt to even consider that it wasn't just 19 dudes with box cutters who somehow broke through the whole system. Nobody gets fired. Nobody takes any accountability for it. The story that we got within a few hours of uh, when it happened, all delivered to us, uh, you know, no investigative reporting. Uh, and here it is 10, 10 years later. And, and obviously this book, uh, Shermer's work at Claremont University, interestingly, David Ray Griffin is a very esteemed senior professor at Claremont. Uh, Michael Shermer is a, a very ephemeral part-time teacher there. Um, he works with, with Paul Zak in what I think looks to me a lot like a psychological operations lab. Um, uh, you know, how, how, how is this public mythology maintained? Uh, you know, it's a huge business. Uh, there are, are jobs. Uh, you know, the Washington Post article looking at, uh, 
you know, it's the biggest growth field in the economy, counterterrorism. It's all depending upon uh, maintaining this sacred myth of 9-11. There's huge economic interests involved. There's huge professional interests involved. It's a disgrace at the academy, at the universities, that we don't have proper research into, you know, what happened with NORAD, what happened with the building construction, what, what is the history of Al-Qaeda, how, how do we connect all, all of these dots. It's, it's a fascinating thing to work at at the university, very inter interdisciplinary. I have a graduate student doing an MA thesis, Joshua Blakeney, in uh, the origins of the global war on terror. So it, it's, it's a very uh, uh, you know, hugely important subject and, and it, I feel much too lonely in the academy on this subject. I want to remind listeners that you're listening to Indie Media on Air. This is KPFK 90.7 FM. I'm speaking with Dr. Anthony J. Hall, who's a professor of globalization studies at the University of Lethbridge in Alberta, Canada. He's the author of The American Empire and the Fourth World, which introduces the series The Bowl with One Spoon. He's also the author of Earth into Property, Colonization, Decolonization, and Capitalism. Now, um, on the issue of racism in 9-11, I think, you know, again, that's a, it's, a, it's one of those territories, I think, you always have to tread carefully because, on the one hand, people accuse uh, those who challenge the official story of being racist because, because to assume that Arabs can't pull off something like this is is racist. On the other hand, you can invert it easily and say to buy into the national security state's explanation that it's Arabs is also racist. So, you know, it's one of those things that is is something that you can go back and forth on and and. Um, but I'd like to pick up where you left off and, and get into the area of the left. We don't have too much time left. I do want to say that if you're interested in, in reading uh, Anthony Hall's work, do a Google search of Anthony J. Hall, and you'll find uh, his articles. Um, I'm often amazed at the uh, so-called left and progressive lack of analysis when it comes to 9-11. I'm astounded by the lack of information that this group has about the national security state, about the military and by the fact that you really rarely hear the terms such as compartmentalization, need to know, black ops, contracting, and of course the most controversial false flag. Yet these terms are crucial, in my opinion, to understanding how the national security state and capitalism function in the context of U.S. imperialism abroad. Indeed, it was uh, Daniel Ganser's book, uh, NATO's Secret Armies, Operation Gladio and Terrorism in Western Europe, that helped me to understand that class analysis and institutional analysis was simply not enough to understand how the system works. And the reason was is because when you, you figure out, and it, this is well documented in Ganser's book, that the CIA and NATO were involved in, in terrorist operations that you were used to blame the left to prevent them from coming to power in places like Italy and all over Europe. And there's not just Italy, but it was examples of terror operations conducted by the U.S. government and its allies in NATO and locally in these stay-behind armies that were went off and started, you know, bombing public facilities and blamed it on me members of the left. You know, that kind of thing is simply not even discussed often within, even within the context of this radio station, and, and it needs to be. And I'd like you to com comment on that and, and that sort of angle. Yeah, of course, uh, you raise a good point that the left should be com very attentive to this, given that the left has so often been uh, sidetracked and held out of power through false flag operations. Uh, Operation Gladio, which you refer to, uh, the whole uh, Red Brigades and, and this view that uh, communists were blowing up things. In fact, it was the right. It was the fascist right who then uh, depicted the communists as, 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 as violent. Uh, uh, this is a, you know, a well-known uh, technique of, 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 of warfare. Um, uh, Jonathan Kay, in, in his work, he, he speaks about uh, 9-11 as a crime of Islam. And uh, this uh, way 9-11 is spun, the outgrowth is that it, it, it seems to um, suggest that all Islamic people and all Arab people are somehow uh, share in the responsibility for 9-11. For and it seems to give license to um, the kind of never-ending military, psychological, uh, operations that 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 we're seeing. So, um, is it you know is it the most um, 
ambitious false flag of all times. We know Operation Northwoods, for instance, that, you know, to blame the Cubans and, and, and after the Bay of Pigs to reinvade Cuba, you know, this, this is all documented. It's on paper. We know about the Reichstag fire. We know about the Maine. Uh, we know about the Gulf, Gulf of Tonkin. Tonkin. Yeah. Uh, the, the, that, uh, and again, it, it speaks to the failure of the mainstream media. When something blows up, and the government is pointing at a group, you know, whether it's the Russia pointing at a, a group, uh, uh, you know, the question should be immediately asked, well, is this a, can we take this as, at face value? Uh, so we, that we don't get historical analysis. Who is Al-Qaeda? It's just mentioned, well, they're the boogeyman. They're the bad, the bad folks. Anything that blows up, it's just reported unquestionably that... Uh, some uh, Islamic uh, extremist group did it. So, so you know, we, we, we need to, uh, this naivety that is part of the myth of uh, American manifest destiny, this kind of innocence that uh, U.S. Uh, imagine uh, themselves. I mean, we, the American dream is uh, over as we've known it. We need another dream. And let's start with some rational discussion about where we're at in history. How did we get here? And 9-11 has a lot to do with that. Well, uh, Dr. Anthony J. Hall, uh, Professor of Globalization Studies at the University of Lethbridge in Alberta, Canada, thank you very much for joining us today on Indie Media On Air. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Um, for listeners, uh, your book is Earth Into Property, Colonization, Decolonization, and Capitalism. Where can they find it? Uh, well, uh, Amazon.com. Uh you know, I guess uh, at your local bookstore. <laughs> at your local bookstore, I could say all the independents. But anyway, it, it's uh, it's all over the the net, and we do a lot of YouTubes and um, you know trying to be our own media uh, and carry on the tradition that you people started here at Pacifica years and years ago. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. All right, thanks for listening. This is Indie Media On Air. I'm Chris Burnett. If you have any comments for the show, you can email chris at indiemedia.org. That's C-H-R-I-S at indiemedia, I-N-D-Y-M-E-D-I-A dot O-R-G. Thanks for listening.